Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. In previous presentations, I discussed stellar magnitude. Absolute magnitudes relate the brightness of one star to the brightness of all the others. Astronomers also speak about the luminosity of the stars, which is another way of describing the brightness of a star. Unlike stellar magnitudes, which have no units but are just numbers on a scale, luminosity has units as it relates the amount of energy released by a star in a certain unit of time or joules per second. Luminosity is therefore synonymous with power released or watts. For a spherical object, one can utilize the Stefan Boltzmann's law, as you can see here, to relate the luminosity to the radius and the fourth power of the temperature for a given emissivity value. Emissivity is a constant related to the ability of a given surface to emit a photon. An object with an emissivity of 1 is a perfect emitter, whereas an object with an emissivity of 0 cannot emit any photons at all. In the gaseous model of the stars, the Stefan Boltzmann's law is usually simplified and the emissivity is always assumed to be equal to 1, which is a major error. There is no basis for making this simplification other than the fact that the gaseous model of the stars have no means of dealing with an emissivity other than one. As a result, only two items control the luminosity of a star according to the accepted models, namely the radius and the temperature. Modern astrophysics ignores that the stars can have a true lattice. That is why the emissivity is always set to one and an error occurs. The emissivity value of stars are not all the same. You will come to understand the consequences when we deal later with the current theory of the white dwarf. Beyond magnitude and luminosity, there is one other aspect of a star which is important, namely its color, because this is related to its apparent temperature. A bright blue star is considered hotter than a red star. In order to properly establish the color of a star, astronomers use filters. They quantify how much light comes from a given star in a particular spectral band, as you can see here. They can then accurately describe the color. There are many filter systems which can be utilized to precisely determine the color of a star, but the most common is the UVB scheme. U stands for ultraviolet, B for blue, and V for visual or yellow. Once the apparent color of a star is properly determined using the filter system, it can be classified according to temperature, as it can be seen in this table. This is referred to as the morgan keenan or MK classification system. You can see the apparent temperature associated with each star type in the table. That is all for today. Hopefully you will remember the central lessons relative to classifying stars, namely that they have a certain brightness or magnitude which can be related to luminosity. In addition, they have a certain color which can be related to their apparent temperature. Next time we will use these two aspects of the stars as the HR diagram is presented. In closing, if you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.